What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Strength Classroom. Today's, uh, you know, I said Sunday's going to be my rant day, if I can get one in for the week. And this is just, it's not rant like I'm going crazy and I'm losing control and I'm out of my mind upset, but it's why I have a home gym. What led me to having a home gym? So we got to rewind all the way back to 2010. That's when I first started lifting weights. Um, like, I'm talking about, like, the first time I stepped into a gym, Okay. Sure, I've screwed around in high school during like gym class, but that doesn't count. Now, 2010 was great. I just started doing barbell lifts and getting into like quasi strength training slash powerlifting. 2011 was also fine. And then 2012 hit, like winter 2012. And I noticed typically the gym would get busy at university around January, February, you know, the typical like resolution months. But something happened in 2012 where the busyness just never went away. And I've always connected it to being that's the year Instagram came out and it became cool and trendy. Hashtag gym life. All that shit, right? I don't think I'm wrong because the gym is always packed. Ever since ever since 2012, I've noticed gym culture just exploded. It's good because it's getting people active, but at the same time, they're barely active. They're active, their their trigger finger for taking camera pictures and selfies is more active. So I'm like, screw this shit. Let me go to the track and field center, which was also at my university. Uh, gym. It had old school equipment, old school screw on dumbbells, squat racks where the safety bars were bent, like platforms, iron weights. I loved that shit. They had this really awesome chest supported row. I loved it. Most people would say this is like ghetto or shit or old or low class. I loved it. The only problem with this gym, I went there for two months. There was zero air conditioning. Zero. So whatever temperature was outside, it was just as hot except there was no wind. So I would be a sweaty mess, but like not sweaty. I'm already a sweaty mess when I'm working out now, but this was sweaty to the point where I felt like I just took a shower with my clothes on. Like my clothes were dripping wet. It was fine in the winter, but once summer came around, it was ridiculous. So I'm like, you know what? I don't like any of the fitness centers near me. Back then, fitness wasn't as popular. So many of the community centers or recreation centers near me didn't have squat racks didn't have benches they just had like a smith machine and that's pretty much it and some dumbbells and then typical other like i call it old people equipment because that's who uses that stuff i'm like you know what let me just scrap together some money i'll get a bar a rack a bench adjustable dumbbells and that'll be enough to set me for a little while and it did and i've basically never regretted that situation or decision ever Let's talk about what having a home gym has allowed me to do. Uh, I avoid ha entering a gym that lacks good equipment. So most gyms will have one, maybe two, maybe if you're lucky, three squat racks. If your gym has any more than that and it's just like a recreation center, you are blessed. Count your blessings. Most gyms cap out at around 100 pound dumbbells. Okay. Very few kettlebells, low quality barbells. And the machines, most gyms are going to have the same machines. It's going to have a hamstring curl, a bicep and tricep machine, a lateral raise, a pec deck, you know, things like that. Overall, it's going to have the same machines. This just doesn't cut it for me. It's not like I use a lot of machines, but I like being imaginative, which leads me to my next point. Being imaginative means you're going to have to take up equipment, sometimes multiple pieces of equipment. And this might be the fact that I'm an only child, but I don't want to share with people. I want to use what I want for as long as I want, and I don't have to wait for anyone. Now, that might sound bratty or rude, or like I said, like a typical spoiled only child, but in order for me to not have to wait for equipment, I had to spend money. So I feel like I earned the right to not wait for equipment. Back in university, I would see these fucking guys, like they'd be like six or seven guys around a bench claiming to be using it. They're basically just joking around half the time. They'll do a set like every 12 minutes. And it's like, dude, are you on the bench or not? Like people complain about curling in the squat rack. Sure, that would infuriate me. I've never actually witnessed, although I've, I've witnessed it one time. Someone actually saw that I was waiting for the squat rack and he was like, you know what, dude, here, have it. I don't even need this. I'll just bring the bar elsewhere. Because that's what a normal, sane gym goer does. Not, but it, And he didn't have a tripod out. If he had a tripod out, I would have still been waiting here till this day. And then when I sadly had to go to university, I had to go abroad for um, teacher's college, I had to then use the weight room, which was good. It was fully stocked. Glute ham raises, sleds. Like, it was the athletic the weight, they called it the weight room. There was the recreation center upstairs, but then for varsity athletes and stuff, which I was not, I was just able to go. They called this the weight room. And there was one day where this dude comes up to me, I'm deadlifting on the platform. And this was a busy night. All the platforms were taken. It was actually insane. And he goes, uh, how much longer will you be on this platform? And I said, I have two sets. That'll be seven to 10 minutes max. 
I was going pretty heavy. He goes, oh, but I'm a varsity athlete. And I went, okay, good for you. And then I put my headphones back in. Like, I don't know what the, what the hell that was supposed to mean. And he's, he's acting like he had priority, which you know what? If that was the rule, if varsity athletes had priority, that's fine. I, I'm a rule follower. If I feel the rules are fair, then I'm a rule follower. And then later when I'm done, I see this banchote doing 65 pound overhead shrugs with bumpers on a platform. Why are you using a platform for overhead shrugs? And I watched him later. It's not like he was building up to a snatch. That's all he did. And then he went elsewhere. Why are you using a platform? Furthermore, why are you using bumpers for overhead shrugs? He wasn't even throwing it down. I don't understand. Okay. I don't understand at all. And then I remember there was someone in my program that worked at the front desk and I was like, yo, dude, do varsity athletes just get to kick you off shit? Cause someone tried to do that to me. He's like, no, but they'll try and do that to you all the time thinking you won't know better. And the only time they'll kick you off is if they're with their strength and conditioning coach and they won't kick you off. They will ask you politely and accommodate you, which brings me to my next point. One time I was deadlifting to a squat rack that was attached to the deadlift platform. And once again, all full. And the coach says, hey man, can we get you to go to that platform over there? Cause we need the, the rack and the platform. And I really didn't want to move, but I'm like, you know what? There's no reason I have to stay. All I need is a platform. And I'm like, can you guys just give me a couple of minutes and I'll walk the weight over there? They're like, no, no, no need. The three dudes picked up the 315 pound barbell and moved it over to the platform. It was done in two seconds. That is positive gym culture for you. Now, another reason I wanted a home gym is because I've made this space mine. Sure, it's crammed in a small little space, but I can get a lot of shit done there. In order to get to a gym that has the same equipment as me or similar, I would have to probably drive like 30 to 40 minutes one way. And that's a lot considering your workout might be an hour and a half tack on driving. That's damn near half your day if you're working, which most people are. So I didn't want that option. I just like having it in my basement when I, when I can afford a, a detached house, maybe I'll put one in my garage. Yeah, that is out of the question, driving so far for a good gym. Now I will say, most gyms have improved over the years. I think a lot of gyms are installing turf, installing more squat racks, which is a positive. But at the same time, it's being offset because there's more people using squat racks and stuff because they're being influenced by Instagram, which sounds like a good thing, but it's not because all they're going to do is get in my fucking way. <laughs> as simple as that. Like I've been saying, I'm going to go to my wife's gym and work out with her, but like, I don't want to kill someone. <laughs> that's, that's close to the truth. Like if my workout flow gets disrupted, I kind of get a bit annoyed. That's another thing I just like being by myself and working out and just, you know, hearing the music, the weights slamming into the floor. It's it's like therapeutic for me. I have my own little flow. It just, no one gets in the way. And that's what I like. But one of the biggest reasons, and I can't believe I left it till the end of the video, it's first on my bullet point to talk, somehow I skipped over it, is the noise shit. When I was in university, they had one platform, one, and the rule was you use rubber weights if you have to deadlift on the platform, not bumpers, just rubber ones. And if you are off the platform, you can deadlift, but you have to use metal plates or vice versa. I can't remember. All I remember is the rules didn't make sense because I would abide by the rules. And then the front desk person would come up to me and tell me to do the opposite. So the next time I would do the opposite and the desk person would say, hey, you have to do this and told me something that contradicted what the other person told me. So I just, one day, I, I didn't snap, but I was like, can I ask you a question? Is it a different rule for every person that works here? Because I'm only doing what the last person told me to do. I'm not just going rogue here. And then one day, I had a barbell rows, okay? 225, I was doing them like Pendele style, very explosively. Someone comes up to me, you know there's offices under the gym. Well, did I tell you to build fucking offices under the gym? Who builds off a gym on top of offices? The gym should be at the bottom floor. And I don't complain about noise. I understand it's a gym. It's not a library. You know what I don't like? The sound of 17 treadmills running at the same time going, hee, 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 hee. I don't like that sound, but I don't say shit because I know that's that person's workout and that's what they want to do. And it's a public space and you just have to put up with it. That's the type of shit I don't like. Building offices under gyms. And one person had the, the gall, the audacity to tell me that I was going to break the floor because the building has a weak infrastructure. Well, if that's the case, we have too many people in here. I don't wanna be in this gym anymore if it's got a weak infrastructure. What a stupid, stupid thing to say to someone. Go get yourself a home gym if you got the space. 